There was a pharaoh in ancient Egypt known as Akhenaten, lived in the 1300s BC, and in the modern day we don't know very much about him other than that he attempted to dispose of the traditional religion of the Egyptian people and replace it with something monotheistic. He wanted Egypt to worship this one god called Aten. Now after his death, immediately all the faces were chipped off of his statues, all records of his existence were just left out of any official history, any official list of rulers of Egypt, and in the rare cases that he was even mentioned at all in ancient Egyptian writings, he's referred to as that criminal or the enemy. Now part of this could have to do with Egyptian culture and spiritual belief. Part of it could be something to the effect of them believing that one's longevity in the afterlife is tied to whether or not people still alive remember you. So maybe they wanted to do more than just make sure he goes down in history as the criminal or the enemy. Maybe for that reason they wanted to completely erase his memory from history. There is, though, another historical example that is a little bit more modern. The Roman Emperor Caligula lived in the first century AD, assassinated before he reached 30 years old. Now, this guy was known as crazy, insane, cruel, tyrannical. There are stories about him forcing fathers to watch the execution of their sons. There are stories about him declaring war on the Roman god Neptune and sending his army out to the beach to stab the water or collect seashells or something. But only more recent historical theories suggests that maybe he wasn't as insane as the history books would tell us. Maybe some of those contemporary writings about his life weren't completely honest. Maybe he was actually very popular with the common people, but he was just hated by the scribes, the scholars, the people who wrote down history. Now, I will ask, does this remind you of someone? Imagine living a hundred years in the future and googling the name Donald Trump. Try to picture what some of the news corporation type websites, some of the first results in those Google results, are gonna say about Trump. What do you think they will write about the grab him by the pussy comment? What do you think they're gonna write about his comments at Charlottesville? What do you think they're gonna write about his involvement with J6? And what do you think they're gonna write about the thing that Biden brought up in his June 2024 debate, accusing Trump of calling soldiers in a World War I one cemetery losers and suckers. What do you think the Google results a hundred years from now are going to say about those things? Now, of course, Trump is a very popular figure. There are millions of people who love him. There are millions of people willing to correct the record on Trump. But what about figures who are not so popular? Milo Yiannopoulos. I've heard people call him a fed. I've heard people say he's annoying or they just don't like him. I've seen people get turned off from him when he went on stage with Kanye West. But whatever you think of him. In 2017, he made history when and that February event of his at UC Berkeley got cancelled because of all the riots and violence on campus. This is the event that kicked off Free Speech Summer, as I will call it. Now, I remember back in 2017, I used to be fond of going on YouTube and going to Milo's YouTube channel and watching these hour-long recordings of these presentations he gave at various college campuses across America, mostly just for the comedic value. But now, Milo's YouTube channel is, of course, gone, and I cannot, for the life of me, find any of those recordings. In fact, if anyone out there listening has them, please do let me know. But now let's think for a minute. What will someone 50 years in the future find when they try to Google the name Milo or Milo Yiannopoulos? Of course, they're going to find what the far left says about him. They're going to find people saying that he's a far right provocateur. They're going to find people saying that he doxes and harasses trans people. They're going to find people giving, oh, the laundry list of evil things Milo has done, both true and untrue. And he doesn't have as many people on the right willing to stand up and give an unbiased view of who he is and what he does. Now let's transition from this to something that might hit a little closer to home for a lot of you. Imagine today that you're an 18, 19, 20-year-old Zoomer. Imagine you hear the word Gamergate somewhere and you have no clue what it is, so you Google it. The first result that comes up is the Wikipedia article, which lists it as Gamergate, parentheses, harassment campaign. And now here's the first paragraph of that article. Gamergate Gate was a loosely organized misogynistic online harassment campaign and a right-wing backlash against feminism, diversity, and progressivism in video game culture. It was conducted using the hashtag Gamergate, primarily in 2014 and 2015. Gamergate targeted women in the video game industry, most notably feminist media critic Anita Sarkeesian and video game developers Zoe Quinn and Rihanna Wu. Now there are elements of truth to that, but that's not the whole picture, and if someone is looking this up for the sake of knowing what it is, for the sake of history. They're not gonna have a complete understanding of why this was done. So in other words, going back to Caligula, 
the scribes, the journalists, the historians, absolutely hate a lot of these things, but regular people are fans of it. Think of those movies that have wonderful critic reviews on Rotten Tomatoes, but horrible fan reviews. This destruction of unbiased knowledge, this purposeful tainting of the truth, with the intention of keeping future generations in the dark about the true nature of some of these topics and some of these people. I will call this the Caligula Effect. Furthermore, I will encourage anyone listening to do their part, whatever their part may be, in preserving this knowledge for future generations, in presenting an unbiased view in whatever platform, whatever medium you can, and ensuring that people in the future remember us, what we're doing today, as more than just evil Nazis, or as more than just voter disenfranchisement, or racist bigots. Because sometime in the future, there will be another generation that tries to tear down statues. And whoever at that time tries to defend those statues, might not have access to the information describing why we're doing what we're doing.